morning, everybody. Morning. All you beautiful ladies, look at you, looking gorgeous. We are God's gorgeous girls, aren't we? Hey, we're precious. We're lovely. And for you to be here today in this weather, you must love Jesus. I hope you didn't come to see me <laughs> because I'm here to meet him too. So if you're here to meet Jesus, we're in the right place. Amen? Okay, I'm so glad to be here this morning. Um, I want to thank Liesl and um, the leadership, uh, Galia, Pastor George and uh, Julius, for allowing me to speak here today. If I get a bit nervous, you'd understand. My husband is actually a pastor. He's been speaking for like 40 years of his life. And God has just brought me to the fold. And I believe this is my season. So, you know, when Lisa <laughs> called me and asked me to speak today, she'll tell you, <laughs> I didn't wait to listen to the whole story. I just said yes. <laughs> and the reason why was that very week, I've been saying to Father God, won't you use me, Lord? Because I believe there's a season for each one of us, ladies. You may be sitting here today feeling lost, lonely, dry, rejected, unloved. It could be by your family. It could be by friends. But you know what? I was there too. And I'm still trusting God for much more in my life. And I want to just encourage us ladies that are here today that do not look at your situation or your circumstances that you're in right now because God can take you out of that and you will never know where he's going to take you to because he knows the end from the beginning. If anybody had to tell me that I would be standing here today speaking to all you beautiful ladies, I would have said, no, you got the wrong person. Because I'll tell you why. The enemy is all out to steal our identity. Our identity is in Jesus and him alone, not what the enemy tells us. So I'm standing here today to let you know that the enemy is under our foot. And when he comes and he whispers things in your ears and tells you otherwise, you tell him, Satan, you get right there because that's where you belong. And you know what? we got to take it by force, girls. When the Lord speaks, you better take that word and run with it. Because today I'm standing here on the promises of God. And the word of God is so powerful. If we can only take the word and apply it to our lives, we would see great and mighty things happen the blessings of God will flow into our lives. I'm a testimony of that. And I'm telling you today, people of God, trust in him and, alone, him and him alone. You know, us women, we go through so many challenges in life. And I love what Liesl, you know, this, this um, mirror, mirror. It's, it's so beautiful because when, when I read that, I thought, wow, Lord, that's me. When many years ago, when I looked in that mirror, I saw a different person. I said, Judy, people were telling you, you're no good. You're unloved. You're unwanted. Because my life was a total mess, as you heard a little bit about me, which I will share later, that the enemy tried to take my life many times because he knew this day was coming. He knew this day was coming. You see, if I had allowed the enemy to take me down, I wouldn't be standing here today. This had to be fulfilled. It had to be fulfilled because God knows all things. When Before he created me in my mother's womb, <laughs> before he created the foundations of the earth, he knew Judy. He had already formed everything about me and knew this day was coming. And the enemy knew that. So what he had to do? Take me down. So he whispered things in my ears. He brought people into my life that was going to trample me. 
was going to mess with me, mess with my mind. So the enemy started to plan things in my mind and tell me, you're no good girl. You better go. End it. I tried suicide so many times. You know, I thought, why should I live on this earth when there's nothing good happening? You know, um, my grandfather was a Hindu priest, my dad's dad. And um, we were Hindu. When I was born, my parents were Hindu. And uh, my dad used to pray for, in his kind of way, um, take a book. He was an astrologer, so he would read um, our future and give us names. And so when I was born, apparently, he gave me a name. And he said to my parents, that I would never get married. There is no future for marriage in my life. And when my brother was born, he told my parents that my, my brother will not have long life on this earth. So anyway, growing up, my parents actually told us this. So we kind of made a joke of it. We laughed about it. But you know, when I gave my heart to the Lord, the Lord started to speak to me about that and remind me that word that was spoken over me was not a blessing. That was a curse. How many of us sitting here today have had curses spoken over us and we've not broken it and we're living that? You're walking around thinking, well, this is who I am. It's because the enemy wants to steal your identity. He puts things in your ears and he tells you, well, that was spoken over you and that's the way it's going to be. How many of you sitting here can identify with what I'm saying? Sometimes our parents even tell us things. They call us names. You're no good. You're useless. If your child doesn't do well in school, you say, say to him or her, oh, you're not good enough. Those are curse words over your children. Parents do not do that. Because those were things that were spoken over my life. So when the Lord reminded me about that curse word, that I would never get married, Holy Spirit is so beautiful. He is so beautiful. I didn't even know the Lord all that well when I started to sense that that is not from God. And guess what I did? I started to pray. I say, Lord, this is never going to happen to me. That is, that word is going to die today. And I started to pray over my life. You know, in my, 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 uh, my relatives, my aunts, I have an aunt who is now 85 years old, my mom's sister, and she's never been married. And she would have loved to, uh, to be married, but she was never married. And I always looked at this aunt and I thought, am I going to have this life? So every time I looked at her and I saw how sad and lonely she was, she would have loved to get married, but her parents never allowed her to because they always said that the, her choices were not good enough. So she believed that, and she never got married. So today she's 85, and she's not married. And I said, that's not going to be my life. You know, in our culture, usually what happens if, you, if you're single and you, uh, you know, you're old in life, getting older in life, um, normally your brother, your older brother, will take you in just to live with him and his family. And I also saw this of my aunt because she was living with her brother, her oldest brother. And there was always chaos. There was always problems in that family. She's forever complaining. And I said, oh my God, this is not going to happen to me. I'm not going to end up with my brother's family. I don't want this life. So I started to pray. I started to curse, uh, cancel all the curses that were spoken over my life. And you know what? God came through for me. But Holy Spirit is so beautiful. If you would allow Holy Spirit to live inside of you, and he will direct your paths. So that was spoken over me. I broke that curse. And I said, Lord, I'm, I'm married to you. I know that I'm married to you. When I gave my heart to the Lord, the Lord saved me radically, and he changed me. 
So I, I broke that curse. I still didn't get married though, but I broke that curse and I felt in my spirit I was released. But when the Lord saved me, I got radically saved and I started to um, pray and go to all the services, go to churches. I was so hungry for God that I would go to every meeting that, there was, that was happening in our uh, church. I would just, I was nursing at the time and I would find every opportunity to take a day off if I knew there was something happening in the week, just to sit at Jesus' feet, just to hear the word, just to grasp, just to take in of what God has given, uh, wants to give me. And I became so hungry for God. So when, we, um, uh, when I look back and I see the hand of God upon my life, even though the enemy wanted to steal my destiny, which he wants to do to us women. He's always wanting to tell us something. You know, he whispers things in our ears, and he might, he'll just plant something in us just once. And guess what happens to us? We start to believe the lies of the devil. We play this thing time and time again. We rehearse this. We rehearse this thing in our mind. And what happens when you do that? You believe that's your identity. Now, can you imagine if I had to believe what my grandfather told me? I would not be married today. I'm married to a wonderful man of God. I didn't ask for a man of God, but he gave me one. That's the blessings of God. And you know what? I don't know how many of you are sitting here today. People have said negative things about you. Do not worry what people say about you, what they think about you, or even what you say Call yourself, because the enemy has no power over you, because your identity is in Christ. Your identity is in Christ. You need to live like the person God has called you to be. You know, each one of us are so precious in the sight of God. We are the apple of his eye. We women, we are so powerful. If you can only take the word of God, if you can only obey the word of God. You know, we pray. I know lots of women, us women, we love to pray, right? We have mothers and grandmothers that have prayed us through, and that's why we're here today, some of us. And you know what? If we can obey the word of God, that's the secret, ladies. You know, obeying the word of God is so, so imperative. It's so important to see the blessings of God flow in your life. You know, I, when, when I uh, started, my mom was actually a prayer warrior. She was a woman. Oh, she was like Mother Teresa. I used to sometimes think my mom was crazy. She was crazy for Jesus. And I never understood this. Why would she want to talk to just anybody on the street about Jesus? I never knew that she loved Jesus so much. At that time, I was still very young. And she would talk to just anybody about Jesus. How many of us do that today? Or are we embarrassed to talk about Jesus? Are you able to go into a store and just ask someone, do you know Jesus? Do we do that? No. Some of us may. Some of us are embarrassed. Some of us are shy. You know, God is looking for the one that will stand out and be different. God has called us to be separate. He wants to separate us. You know, we, we are so precious to him that he's looking for that one that will be obedient. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. He speaks to each one of us. How many of us do not hear that voice? Because there's so much of noise going around. We are always in a noisy place. We've got things going on with all this technical stuff and these phones and cell phones. We, our ears, ears are plugged sometimes. And there's so much going on, and God is speaking, but we're not listening. And then you say you're praying, and you're not hearing, you're not getting results. No, you're not listening, because he's talking to us. He, wa he loves to communicate with us. You know, he's, he loves intimacy. He, when we go into our closets and talk to him, he loves it. He just loves that time. You know, for uh, when you see young people in love and they always want to be together or a young couple just being married, you'll see them always together. They're wanting to get to know each other more and more because they want to get intimate. What about us being intimate with our Father God? He's waiting for that. He wants to share secrets with us. He wants to tell us how much he loves us. You know this God that we're talking about here in, in Psalm 139? The David 
he's in a relationship with God. And when you read Psalm 139, you see, you see the heart of the Father. You know, our God is all-knowing. He's all-loving. He's all-powerful. He's everywhere. You know, wherever you go, even at times, you may be in a situation. You know, us women, we have issues. Sometimes uh, we can stay up all night and be crying in our beds. Maybe our spouses don't even know that. But guess what? Father God knows. He sees those tears. None of those tears go in vain. Those tears are held, and the Lord sees it, and he brings healing. You may not see uh, um, instant results when you pray, but guess what? God hasn't forgotten us. He knows us. He knows us by name. He loves us unconditionally. And you know, sometimes when you do something wrong or you say something that you know what you shouldn't have said to somebody, and the enemy will say, God's going to punish you for that. You said something you shouldn't have said, and God's going to punish you. No. He's not a God that punishes. He loves us irrespective. He loves us unconditionally. You know, he died on that cross for us. So when you go and repent to Father God and you tell him, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done, you're forgiven. He paid that price on the, on the cross. When he died on that cross, he paid the price. We are the righteousness of God, ladies. We are the righteousness of God. We are blood bought. And you know, for us to be here today, to just sit here and to be in the presence of God, just to share about this God that loves us so much, he's a God that knows our thoughts. Even as you're sitting here, he knows what you're thinking about. You know, sometimes we can be talking to our friends, looking at them, and you might be thinking negative thoughts about that person. And you think nobody knows. Yeah. He knows. He knows all about that. You know, God wants us, women of God, to have integrity. We need to stand out. When we go out into our workplaces or when we're in our neighborhood, do people see us as children of God? Does our neighbors see that you're going to church on a Sunday and you come back and then the next thing there's just all this noise coming from your home? What do you think they're going to think? they Christians, but they look at them. Sometimes the unbelievers have more love in their home than some of our believers because there's always the enemy. It's the enemy. He wants to bring us down. He wants to say things. He wants people to think otherwise. But let me tell you this today. You stand firm. Do not allow the enemy do not give him foothold in your life. You know, those things, when, when we start thinking negative thoughts, when the enemy plants negative thoughts in our minds, and you feed on that, and you keep feeding on that, that is an open door. That is an open door, and that's how the enemy comes in. And you'll notice that when you don't shut those doors and you don't repent of those things, it might be little things. Sometimes, you know, we'll say, oh, if that's just a, a, a white lie. The Lord started to uh, remind me about even white lies. You know, sometimes we just say, oh, it's just something. It's just nothing. No, it's not nothing. Those things add up. They add up and add up and add up, and then what happens? Then you think, oh, my God, what is going on with me? But I'm praying, and why am I feeling this way? Examine yourself. Go and ask God to show you where have you gone wrong? What have you done? What have you said? Who have you hurt? Is there any unforgiveness? Unforgiveness is number one. Sometimes we can, you know, hurt people. We can um, and just think nothing of it and say, oh, they did us wrong. Yeah, but we still got to forgive them. This is what God is wanting of us. This is what God, that's why God wants to separate us, woman. He wants to take us aside. You know, um, God wants to uh, speak to us. When God started to do this in my life, um, I remember I, I didn't understand this. I, I, I even said to my husband, why am I feeling this way? I'm just feeling like I don't want to actually be uh, socialized that much, you know, with certain people. And I just wanted to be away. He didn't understand it at the time, but I knew. I knew what I was feeling on the inside. I knew God was doing something. But I didn't want to please those people because 
it would have felt like, you know, I'm being horrible or being ugly because my husband was kind of feeling, and he said to me, you know, what would they think? I said, I know, but what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? I just feel I want to lock myself away. You know, sometimes the Holy Spirit wants to do that is because he wants to start cleaning up our lives. He wants to start pruning our lives. This is what he does. He takes away all the dead branches, the dead leaves, and he starts to clean us from the inside. And if you will allow him to do that, if you will allow Father God to clean the inside of you, he prunes, he takes away the deadness, he takes away the dead branches, and then he takes you aside and he says, come my child, I need you. And when God was doing that with me, nobody explained to me what was happening. Well, nobody knew. People thought I was crazy. I remember when I shared this with my sister, and I used to always tell her, you need to be aware. Be careful of that person because you're always having problems around there. Just be careful. Um, and she used to also think, you know, I'm going to be weird. And I used to say to her, you know, sometimes um, when you associate with people that are toxic, and you'll know them, you will know them, you won't need somebody to come and uh, prophesy. You, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, he's going to tell you, just be careful, be aware. So you, you, you take yourself away and you say, Lord, what are you saying here? And the Lord will show you. And I used to say to my sister, uh, being around a toxic person is like a virus, right? And what happened, we know, we've all been... <laughs> with COVID, we know what the virus does. It contaminates us. So I used to say, this was happening actually before COVID hit. My sister even mentioned that to me the other day. She said, you kept telling me to stay away from the virus. I even told my sister, I said, you're becoming like a virus. I want to stay away from you. But God was starting to do a work in me, which I didn't understand. So... And now she understands, and she said to me the other day, she says, well, you would always talk about these things, and I thought you were crazy, really. So what am I saying to you today? That God will speak to you. you maybe you have people in your life that are toxic, and you find that every time you're around that person, there's something not right. There's, there's a problem. There's always chaos. There's always arguments. There's always something going on. And Father God is saying, just step aside, come aside. I want to do something in you. And God was doing that with me, and I never understood it. I said to the Lord, when I started to read up and learn more about the pruning process, I said, Lord, you used me like a guinea pig. Nobody told me what you were doing with me. I looked like a crazy woman. My family really thought I was going crazy. Sometimes my husband would look at me, but he's such a darling. You know, he would just look at me and smile. Uh, <laughs> but yet I would tell him what I'm feeling. And I would love to share what God was doing with me. And I would tell him, but I'm feeling this way. Why am I feeling this way? And you know, the beauty part of having the Holy Spirit inside of us is that you know that there's a knowing inside of us. Us women have that knowing. There's deep down inside of us. He, he will speak to us. And it's not like, I wonder. There's no doubt. There's no double-mindedness in this. You will know that is the Holy Spirit speaking through you. And when you do that, when you know it's the Spirit of God, and you obey the Word of God, and you follow what He's saying, not worried about what people think of you. That should be the last thing on your mind. The last thing on your mind. And you know what, uh, ladies, let me tell you this. If God speaks to you and you feel, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just scared. People, I don't want people to think I'm crazy. God is going to watch that as well. Are you obeying him? Or are you scared of people? You know, sometimes there's ways of doing things. We don't have to be ugly to people. But God will speak to you on how you need to handle those things. Um, and you step aside. Take yourself away. Get into the closet. Ask, 
Father God, what are you doing? That's what I used to do because I never understood it and nobody could tell me. My husband's a pastor. He couldn't even tell me what was going on with me because this relationship that I had with my heavenly father was telling me something and I needed to hear it. I needed to do it. So along this path, and finding my identity, because in uh, Psalm 139 talks about this God, this all-knowing God, this all-loving God. He knows each one of us here. Before he formed the foundations of this earth, he knew each one of us. Imagine that he knows us. He, not even our spouses or our families know us like he knows us. Nobody knows us like he knows us. He loves us unconditionally. Whether we do the wrong thing, whether we go on the wrong path, he lets us. If we want to go on the wrong path, he'll say, let my child go. He wants you to see where you're going, what you're doing, and then you're going to come back to him. You know, you may even have children, adult children or little ones or teenagers that are walked away from God. And us mothers, we all have, that our mothers here will know um, uh, sometime in our lives where our kids have sometimes messed up. And the enemy wants, if he can't get you, he's going to get your children. Let me tell you that. Definitely. If he can't get you, he's going to get your children. But you need to stand firm. You need to stand strong. You need to know this God that you serve. He is so powerful. When you call upon his name, he's there to answer you. When you cry out to him, he's there to answer you. You may not see the answers immediately, but he's going to answer you. I can promise you that. I'm standing here today because of that. My mom's prayers were answered. And today I'm standing here because I know the God my mom served is the God I'm serving today. So I want to encourage mothers that have children that are wayward, that are backslidden, and you're crying out to them. You do not know what is going on. They may be on drugs or they may be uh, in a relationship you're not happy with. I want to say to you, mothers, you go to Father God and you talk to him. And he will answer you. He will bring them back. You know, the word of God says that the angel of the Lord, he sends the angel of the Lord out there to watch over us, watch over our children. When we pray and we ask uh, Father God for um, his hand of protection, he sends his angels out there. So your children are covered. If you're praying for your children, remember, they are covered. And they will come back to God. They will come back to the fold because God will never allow our children. If you, are, if you are a praying person and you're seeking God and you're crying out to God and your concerns are about your family and about uh, uh, your children, he's certainly going to come through for you. He's never going to leave you, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, see you crying and not attend to you. And like I said, it may not be. I was saved 30 years ago when I got saved. My life was a total mess. I mean, it was a total mess. Um, I just felt this life is just not worth living. And like I said, the enemy will want to take you down. So like that word that was spoken over me, that curse, that the enemy, then my grandfather, which spoke, he didn't know any better, but it was what my parents believed in. They believed in these Hindus' faith and Hindu God, that they um, trusted in. So they believed very strongly with the, the astrologists and whatever they said over our lives. So, you know, the enemy couldn't get me, but guess what? He got my brother. My brother was 34 years old when that word that was spoken over his life, that he will not have a long life. And because he was not strong in the faith, there were some things in life that he opened himself, he opened doors. The enemy came in and he just took over his life. And when he was 34, he committed suicide. And uh, it, was our, my, it was actually in my home. Uh, we had gone to church that Sunday morning. And um, 
when I got back home from church, I saw his car was parked in the yard, but when I went to my home, I see the door was locked, and I couldn't understand why. So I had to get the locksmith to come and open the door, and then I, I found out that he had hung himself in the bathroom. And I knew that was the enemy. I knew without a shadow of doubt those doors that were opened to the enemy, that word that was spoken over his life when he was born by my grandfather, that he will not have long life, that had come to pass. So what am I saying today? That is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to steal. He wants to rob. He wants to mess us up. But you know what? He can do whatever he wants to. In fact, after my brother's death, my mom, my parents were alive at the time, we grew stronger in the faith. We didn't allow that to take us down. It could have. And you know, my brother was married at the time, and he had a, a child. She was two when, my, when he committed suicide. And shame, she didn't get to, to know her dad very much. But you know, my, um, the, he was separated from his wife. His wife was fed up with him because he was an alcohol and uh, became worse. So she just packed him up and sent him out. And she came and lived with me and my parents. And when my brother died, I must tell you this, my family was ready to take my sister-in-law down. <laughs> uh, because they blamed her, because she kicked him out of the house. So they said, this is your fault. Well, he did go there that morning. He wanted to go to church with her and the child, and she wouldn't let him in. And that's what we heard. Um, and then when he came back home, I asked him, what happened? He said, no, she, she wouldn't let me in. So he just asked me, he said, can I just please sit here? Uh, he asked me not to to uh, lock my, my door because he wanted to be in my home and, um, and he wanted to use my telephone. I said, okay, fine. And so when this happened, I called her to ask her what happened and she, she said, you know, he wanted to come uh, but I wouldn't let him in. She was afraid, she said. But my family didn't want to hear anything about it. They said it was her fault. But let me tell you something. I was not a very, um, I wasn't very strong in the faith, but I was growing in the faith because I remember speaking to my brother. He did tell me that, you know, he was thinking of ending his life. And I, I spoke to him and I said, you know, this is what the word of God says. And, and I said, do you know where you'd end up if you did that? But him being so um, into his alcohol, and he was also seeing a psychiatrist at the time because of depression and all of that, because that's what the enemy did. He took total control of his mind. And so when this happened, can I tell you what happened to me? There was this love that I had for, my, for his wife that sh my family was so angry with me. How can I extend love to her because she killed our brother. This is what my family said. I had no control of what I was feeling, people. This is what God does to us. When you allow the Holy Spirit in your life and when you separate yourself, when you do and, and follow the word of God without compromising, God takes you. He sets you aside. And he does something supernatural in your life. I had no idea what he was doing. I actually didn't even know that it was God doing it at the time. Do you know, I only found out about it recently. That was God that did that to me. Because my family was ready to crucify me. Because I was showing her so much of love. I was extending myself. They didn't even want to go. She had a memorial service for, for him. Because they were still married but they were separated. And so she did all of these things, also feeling guilty, but she had this memorial service and my, my family said, no, we're not attending. But I was ready to go, but they didn't want me to. So I, had, I was like being pulled from both sides. 
Because God was saying, I need to love her. Even if she was at fault. We need to love. We need to love the people that are feeling hurt and pain. We need to extend ourselves. Because what would Jesus do? He would do the same, wouldn't he? That's what he does for you and I. When we are going through pain and suffering and hurt and abuse, I mean, how many women out there are being abused by their spouses today or by their boyfriends? And I know what, first class, I know about abuse. I mean, I've been through it. I live the life. I know what happened to me. And therefore, when, 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 when the enemy kept telling me that I will never get married, I told myself, after that relationship, there was never going to be a man in my life. Never. I told myself. And then I, when I came to know the Lord, and I said, Lord, I'm married to you. You are my husband. You are my lover. You're the lover of my soul. I started to just give myself, throw myself totally into the hands of God for him to do what he wants to do with me. I said, Lord, you take me. You use me. I'm all yours. I'm not giving myself to anyone else. And guess what? When I said that to the Lord, he took me aside. This was when I was living in Johannesburg, and I was on my own. The, the Lord started to strip me. He took away all that pain that I was going through. He took away all the things that was keeping me down and keeping me bound. He took it all away. He started to peel off the layers, the layers that was, was keeping me bound and keep telling me otherwise of what God was saying. He wanted to, uh, to strip me of my identity in Christ and make me feel, but God said, I am your father, God. I am the lover of your soul. It was about five years later when I found myself all clean and ready to move into the world. Something I realized happened when I was working in this um, NGO. I lived there for 12 years. I worked there. When I first moved to that place, you know, there's one, there's, a, there's an entrance and exit that we use every day. For 12 years, that was in and out for me. But when the Lord started to clean me out, he opened my eyes. And the first thing I realized one day as I was driving in to the gate, we had to come in, wait for the second gate to open, and I'm looking up. I see this beautiful tree in front of me. This is like five, six years later now. This tree's been there <laughs> when I moved there, but I'm seeing it like then. I said, wow, Lord, so this is what the enemy does to us. He blinds us from seeing God's beauty. He blinds us from seeing the natural beauty. He blinds us from seeing the things that he's created. He blinds us from seeing and wanting to enjoy life. How many uh, women are blinded because of the pain, the suffering that they're going through? The enemy blinds you. You do not see beyond that pain. You do not see beyond what you're going through. You do not see beyond that, beyond that abuse because the enemy says, you don't deserve it. But let me tell you something today. When Jesus comes into your life, when he cleans you out, when he takes away the old and he brings in the new, he removes the scales, he removes the blindness, and then you can see. And God showed me that beautiful tree, beautiful flowers. I said, wow, this has been here all along, and I've never seen it. Then the Lord said, it's because he blinded you. But today you see. So ladies, I want to encourage you today. If you're sitting here feeling that you are dry, feeling that you, you're blinded, you're not seeing, maybe you knew in your family situation then there's so much of pain that you're experiencing and you, you're not experiencing peace in your heart, but you know Jesus, but you're not experiencing peace. You need to know 
The enemy wants to steal your identity, but do not allow him. You need to say to him, Satan, you are under my foot. You put him there and you squeeze him. You know, I used to do that when I used to do warfare, when my life was in a mess and I wanted God so badly. I would walk up and down and I'd do this. I'd say, Satan, you are under my foot. You do not come anywhere near me or my family or my child. I believe that I am I belong to Jesus. And you know, when you become violent and you become, uh, you do warfare, don't be afraid of anybody. When I used to go to, when I was in church, when the Spirit of God used to tell me to jump up and down, scream, shout, if the, the, if the pastor was preaching and that word like hit my spirit, I would get excited. I didn't care who was watching me. I didn't care what anybody thought of me. You think I'm crazy? Yes, I'm crazy for him. We need to be crazy for Jesus, people. Come on. God has given us this inside of us. We need to fight the enemy. We need to take back what he's stolen. The word of God says we need, he will give us back what the enemy has stolen, what the canker worm has stolen, what the palmer worm has stolen. He will give us back a hundredfold. 30 years of my life was a total mess. But the next 30 years, God has given me, wow, you know, I love this Jesus so much because of what he's done for me. I pray that each one of you that are here today will not let the enemy take you down because your destiny is in him. And he wants you to know that. He wants you to know that Jesus died for you. He died so that you can have life and life more abundantly. Don't settle for what you have. Don't settle for the least. Settle for more. Because you need to know God has so much more for you and I. There's so much more he wants to do. Doesn't mean that you hit 60 now that it's time to die. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you this. When I turned 60 a year ago, before that, and yet we were here in PE. We moved here about two, just before COVID, it, we moved to PE. And because of the lockdown and everything that was going on, I started to feel, well, Lord, I think I live my life. I've done everything. Looks like you're coming back very soon. So now I'm going to pack my bags. So guess what I was? I was talking about death to my husband as well. And he looked at me strangely and he said, why are you talking about death? I said, listen, look what's happening. Jesus is coming soon. So I started to give away clothes. I started to empty my cupboards. I started to do some strange things because I felt this is it. I've turned 60. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> so, then I see what was happening was I started to get calls to minister online. So, my husband was doing a lot of that during the lockdown. God really opened many doors for us. But then I got called in as well to do some teaching and preaching. And I thought, sure. Yeah, I'm busy preparing to die. <laughs> and the Lord is setting me up here. So anyway, towards the latter part of last year it was, um, and we did a lot of online ministry, but it was so beautiful. You know, I don't know about you, but this lockdown has really done something for me. If it didn't bring me closer to God, oh, this has been such an amazing time. It is done, it did, it did so much for me that I'm thinking, how can I even think of dying when it's like I've just started? I mean, I was doing gardening. I've never had green fingers in my life. I started to, <laughs> to gardening, plant things, and my garden was flourishing. People would actually come to look at my garden. I had vegetables and I had flowers, and I never knew how to do those things. I started to become creative. I started to paint. My husband was looking at me and thinking, oh, I even started to cook things I've never cooked before. <laughs> I thought, this is lovely. This is so good. So, you know, he started to bring out all the creativeness from inside of me. This was all during the lockdown. And um, towards the latter part of last year, we used to be online with many uh, nations. And there was a, a man in Singapore that was speaking online, and it was his last day, so I thought, let me just join. And while I was online there, he called my name, and he said to me, Judy, and I didn't have my face full, I just, my, I was my eyes, 
didn't want to show my full face. So he said, Judy, I just see your eyes. Can you come on the screen? <laughs> so, so I went on, and he started to prophesy over me. I said, my word. That prophetic word just blew me away. I said, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying to me? You're not finished with me? And yet I am packing up, but you still have so much more for me? Hey? And then, it was that week, in the same week, I got a call from a businessman. He's an acquaintance. We don't really know him all that well. But anyway, he called me, and I thought, why is he calling me? This is weird. So I put the phone on speaker so my husband can also hear the conversation. And he started to talk about business. So I thought, oh, this doesn't interest me. But anyway, let my husband listen. So when he had done, I asked my husband, I said, what was this about? <laughs> he said, you'll never believe it. He was asking if you would think of uh, joining him um, and being a partner in his business. I said, oh, you must have got the wrong person. He said, no, he's serious. He wants you to think about it. I said, well, does he know what we do in the ministry? He says, no, he's fully aware of it. But he was just, uh, he said, you've been on his mind. I said, me? Why me? We're not even like, we're not chummies, you know. We don't talk all the time. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, I said to my husband, well, it, you know, it must be God. Then I will do it. But if it's not God, I've got nothing to do with it. Then my husband reminded me about the prophetic word. I said, no, that's fine. But I need to get confirmation from God. And then um, the guy called me again to just hear what I had to say. And I said to him, I said, you know what? Uh, uh, you sure you got the right person? He says, no, I have been thinking about you. I said... Um, business and ministry is different because I'm called. I know I'm called. I know this is the time God has called me. I'm not going to run after money because I know who I am in Christ. I don't earn a salary. My husband and I don't earn a salary, but we know how to live by faith. Come on, guys. Do you know how to live by faith? You know, faith it's so beautiful. It's so powerful just to trust God each day, to know that each day when you get out of bed, you don't have to worry about a thing because he takes care of it. He takes care of each one of us. We may, we have challenges too. We've got children. They all have their own challenges, which we carry. We pray for them. But you know what? We've learned to leave them at Jesus' feet. We used to carry them once in our lives. We used to take it upon our shoulders, and we know what it did to us. It used to weigh us down so badly. It started to take our focus away from the things of God because that was a distraction. And then God started to say, no, you need to focus. I've called you for such a time as this, so you need to trust me. You need to have your faith in me. And having faith in the God, the Most High God, is more beautiful. And you know what? I love this. When this guy said to me, I must uh, think about it, and he also wanted to, uh, he wanted to work for him as well as uh, be partner in his, in, the, uh, in his business. So at the time, because of the lockdown and all of that, I said, work, okay. Uh, he said he'll give me something every month. And so I said, listen, I'm not, I don't have an answer for you. I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to talk to Father God first. And hear what he says. I need to know. If he says okay, then I'll let you know. Three months later, three months later, I went up and I spoke to him. We talked about, I just wanted to know more about what he was doing and all of that. I said to him, but still, I want you to know this is my calling. This is number one. He says, no, I understand. Even if you're traveling, you can do this while you're away. I said, okay, as long as you understand. But I'll put God first in everything. Then this comes. He said, fine. So it was January when I started to help him. Just doing a little bit of admin. 
And it felt good because, you know, it was still locked down and things were also closed and uh, we hadn't started traveling by then. And then come, it was six months later, things started to open up. And then my husband and I attended a conference. And you know, at that conference, God spoke to me. There was such fire in that place. There was such anointing. When we were coming back home, I just felt the stirring in my spirit. I just felt uneasy. I said, Lord, what is it? But, but it, was just so be- it was a beautiful, uh, overwhelming sense of God because there was fire that I was feeling on the inside. And then I said, no, I'm going to have to talk to this guy because now I think this is the season is over. So I called him up and I said to him, uh, how are you doing? How's things? He said, oh, it's busy. And the business was getting busy. I said, you know what? I think we need to talk because I'm, you know, you know the call of God in my life. And I said, you know, things are starting to happen now and we are starting to travel again and your work is growing and we need to look at this. And he said, okay. I said, I think you need to also get more people on board to help you because I'm not able to work and do this because this is work that is growing. But my call is with my God. Yes, it's good to get money every month. It's good to get on a salary. It is. But what he gives me is much more than that money because I know my calling. I know who I am in Christ. He takes care of me. Do you know when I get up in the morning, I don't have to worry about work. I don't have to worry about who's calling me and who's what. what. I want to get into the word and hear what he has to say to me. So I said, well, this is it. He said, okay, this is how you feel. So that was it. Came to an end. And guess what? When I did that, I sensed such this like, like a heaviness just left me because it was kind of bothering me at the back of my mind. I was doing it. And I kept saying, every time I was doing the job, I said, Lord, I'm only doing this because of you. You know that. I'm not happy to do this. I'm doing it only because of you. And I kept saying it. And I think the Lord was like also getting tired of me saying that. So now it's gone. But what am I saying? Why am I saying this to you? At 61, I got called to be a partner in a business. Me, me of all people. I cried. When I got that call, I cried. I cried. I cried like a baby. I cried. I phoned his wife and I cried. I said, what is this? Why, why, why me? Why me? I, I'm so happy where I am. I don't want this. I don't need this. And I do believe it was also a test. Because God wants to see where our heart is. Where is our heart? Because I promise you, not earning a salary for me is like, wow, God, my trust is in you. My hope is in you. You know, there's not a day that goes by where my husband and I can say, we are struggling for something. God comes through for us. You know, it was during COVID, during the lockdown. Please remind me when it's time. I don't know. Somebody must tell me. Oh, time's up. Wow. <laughs> Gosh. Sorry. <laughs> you see, I wasn't warned about that, Lisa. <laughs> I'm looking at this, but I'm not reading it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so sorry. My apologies. Oh, Father, forgive me. Let's pray. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. (laughs) You see how excited I can get? Hey, did you see what Jesus has done to me? He's made me a crazy woman. (laughs) Okay, Father God, please forgive me. (laughs) But thank you. Thank you for speaking. I pray that that, uh, my story or some of the things that I've shared today that would have touched the ladies that are here. I pray, God, even as we go out and do whatever we have to do now, that you would be with us. And thank you for this great opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Sorry, ladies.